that one's a one. But I use I use uh, size twos, ones, one aughts, two aughts. Sometimes I even put double eyes on these things. And I'll tie one first, and I'll show you how I go about prepping everything. What I like to do is I like to sharpen the hooks, and this is a, um, a lure Jensen file. The easiest way to do that is to pinch your barb down first. What I do is I'll take it and I'll pinch the barb down first. Pinch it down so that you, you can see it like that. But it still leaves a bump on there. So what I normally do is I'll take, I'll take the file and I'll just file off that bump first. First thing I do is I file off the bump because I don't want that bump getting in the way of the penetrating a fish's jaw. And it really works. Need to, you won't need to do it on this one, right? You can sharpen it afterwards if you want. I like to sharpen my hooks beforehand. I like to know that, because sometimes when you're sharpening it, if you grind the tip off too much, it becomes a short, blunt tip rather than a long, fine tip, and it doesn't penetrate as well. So first thing I do is I hook it in this way and I'll take my thread and I'll start it right at the tip, right at the front. And go about, I don't know, about a third of the way back. <coughs> Alright, I tied it on at the front. I went forward and then came back backwards. And right about at the right about at the one third part point there, I'm gonna tie in an eye, an eyeball. The ones I like to use are called real eyes plus. And it's a brass barbell eye with a painted on pupil. This one has a third of the way back on the shank, take a couple of wraps around it like that, actually three wraps, and then put three wraps going the opposite direction, like that. And then I'll come underneath it and build up a base underneath it. If, it, if the eyes are crooked, what I'll do is I'll come underneath and I will straighten it out before I go any further. And I do that by putting more crosses on one side than the other. Okay, and now what you want to do is you want to take some super glue. And so what you do is you put some super glue onto that joint and we'll probably just a, a drop to soak in there. And what that does is it locks the thread, it locks the thread to the uh, shank of the hook because what actually holds, what actually holds the uh, eyes in place is keeping the thread from spinning around the shank of the hook. And if you can glue that down and lock it to the shank of the hook, then you've got that pretty much, pretty much handled right there. I still go through a few more wraps to build it up a little bit and then make a larger base on top of it. And basically what I'm doing is I'm covering up the super glue. Now. Now, what I use is some of this uh, white bucktail. Doesn't matter where I get it from, just some white bucktail. And I'll snip off, I'll snip off a, a, a small section. Now you can you can make you can make these flies as bulky as you want. 
I like mine a little bulkier. As you look at it right now, what you're looking at is this part here is going to be the bottom of the fly. Okay. So keep that in mind. And you can make you can make it bulky with a lot of material or very very uh, sparse with just a thin amount of material. I like to make mine thicker, and if I need to, I can cut it off when I get there. But all I do is clip out a section like that, hold it by the long portion of the tips, and bring out all of the little small ones in the middle. <coughs> and what that does is it thins out the bunch just a little bit. I'll take this, put the butt end flat, start my thread right in front of the eyeballs. Put a couple of wraps on there and then cinch it down tight. Don't worry about covering it all up right now. Come behind the eyes and tie it down. Now at this point, I just leave it hanging back there like a brush. At this point, I will take some crystal chenille or some other stuff or even just plain thread. And what I'll do is I'll make a red spot on the back half of the fly. And I'll do that with some red thread. Just a little bit of red to show through some little white. And then I'll go ahead and finish that on there. Now at this point, at this point you can uh, put some head cement. <coughs> I don't usually use the head cement because I normally epoxy this afterwards. Oh, sorry. It's not heavy enough. Oops. Did that wrong, didn't I? Well, okay. I'll just come forwards then. Should have tied it off. But anyway. Basically what you're looking at is the fly with, uh, with all the hair tied on the top of the hook right now. But as you turn it over, it's going to become the bottom. Okay. I'll do the same thing with the chartreuse. Tie in a bunch of hair. Grab it by the long ends and then pull out all of the little shorts. And I'll put it on top to gauge the length of where it is. And usually the, usually the uh, chartreuse goes on just a little bit longer than the, than the white underbody. This is where it becomes tricky. Put the uh, thread right up next to the eye, clip the butt ends flat, pop it in, go around it a couple of loose turns, and then pull it tight while holding it up there. And tie them down. And at this point, I try to make it fairly, a fairly smooth nose on the fly. It's been moving around. Is that okay? Yep. Fine. Okay. All right. 
And from that point on, basically the fly is pretty much finished. But I also like to have a dark top, and I, I sometimes tie it with a light green. Um, I guess it's a lime, lime green color, a little bit of a chartreuse or something like that. Basically, I take about six or seven strands of this material, clip it out. What is that material called? It's just plain crystal flash. And I will, let's see, move the thread further up the nose, about midway up the nose, and then tie on the crystal flash. Tie it on over the top, right down the center. And then once I got it in place, I'll take it and cut some short, cut some longer, cut a little bit longer like that so it spreads out a little bit. And then at this point, I'll finish off the head. And that's the basic fly I use out at Los Vaqueros or actually anywhere they're stripers. The other thing I like to do is I like to put some flashaboo in the middle. And on the second fly we'll do that. We'll put some flashaboo in the middle. But basically that's the basic clouser fly there. And you'll see it's kind of bulky. It's bulkier than most of the the ties that you'll see for the clouser. And that's because they tie the, the overwing down behind the eyes also. I don't like to do that. I like to make it, I like to make it bulky. And it seems to catch more fish that way. Pushes more water. Yeah, pushes more water, but I don't think that really matters. The water's so clear in a lot of places. Actually, I fish the same fly in the uh, uh, Napa River and it is so muddy in the Napa River that you can barely see three four inches down. Some days you get a good clear day and you can see about a foot but uh, mostly it's it's three to four inch inch uh, depth and how those fish find these flies I have no idea.